Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra and broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Today's uh, 5D Academy is about allowing life to unfold and come to you. Let's take a deep breath and relax into this moment. Just hang out here in this moment. Just relax into everything. Just ah, take a deep breath and just let it go. We're here, we're together, all is well. And now as we're together, we're here and you're just relaxing into this moment without an agenda, without trying to make something happen. Just bring your attention inwards, shift your attention inwards Close your eyes, bring your attention inwards and look for the source of your thoughts. Where do your thoughts come from? Kind of bring your attention in that direction. Where do the thoughts come from? Where do they originate? So trace back your thoughts to that place. And as you trace your thoughts back to the source where they come from, you probably will experience that the mind becomes quiet. And you just keep your attention on that place without fighting, without trying, without struggling. It should be effortless. It's just a matter of Shifting the attention, you're shifting your attention inwards. You're here, you are present, you are available, yet you are not forcing anything, allowing things to happen.
allowing meditation to come to you.
come back here. So we, just by simply doing meditation and uh, not trying to force anything, you are simply allowing rather than trying to make something happen. And you can look at that in every facet of our lives, that moments that you're just allowing for something to happen or periods in your life, or you're forcing it to happen, especially when it comes to this. And <clears throat> Sometimes, of course, you know, you have to be persistent and keep pushing against something because that's what requires situation, requires you pushing something. And that's part of life. But also, if you're pushing something to happen, still, it can come from a different place. It can be coming from a place that... Uh, you're, you're trying it, but you're not really, um, there's like a detachment to the results. So you put the energy into it because it feels like it, you keep pushing it. But in the meantime, it's like you're detached and you're allowing that, okay, I'm gonna keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And then in the meantime, I'll just allow to see how everything is going to unfold. So there's a difference, and, uh, but we're gonna get into that. Also, um, there's different levels that in your consciousness as you're growing and evolving to become more aware, more awake, uh, the idea of what we're doing is ultimately you have to always come back to the very source of it which is inner peace you we are doing whatever we're doing when we come on this path we call it okay it's a spiritual path is ultimately you want to be happy happiness is the ultimate goal you want to be at peace with yourself and you want to be at peace with your surrounding so you're not basically suffering you're not in a battle with everything that's what basically is happening and uh in this process many different things reveal themselves and you're faced to look at yourself, look at things. It forces your existence to look at things, look, look inside, look at your reaction, look the way you're dealing with things, you're looking like how bad you want something, how much you want something to really happen. And, uh, But the more like you're starting to recognize yourself, the more like you're dissolving into now, the more you're becoming meditative. You're going into a state of meditation. The more you start to see that there is an energy, there is something in life, there's a force that runs through everything, and there's a force that operates everything. Behind what everything looks like, there is something, whatever situation it is, whether it's wherever you are, whatever is going on in the world, whatever is going on in your world, behind it, there's an energy that runs things, operates things. And it's one energy. It's 
we can call it consciousness. You can call it God. You can call it that. Whatever name you want to put into it. You can, you can call it the universal energy. There is something behind everything. It's like all the electrical outlets that you're using, whether you're using TV, you're using your computer, lights, blow dryer, uh, microwave, refrigerator, whatever electrical outlet you are using, they all are being run by electricity. Elect so there's one thing in common in all of them, and there's one thing that makes each of them operate, and that's electricity. So what I'm referring to is that everything in the manifest world, you know, from the moment you open your eyes and you are starting to see millions and millions of different objects, all these objects appear in this world. And the human species is one of them in among everything else that, that manifests and appears. So, but all of these objects, all of these things, all these, all the animals, all these species in the air, on the land, in the water, or underground including the vegetations, they're all living beings and they're all operating based on the very source of life. So it's like everything is being operated by electricity. So it's one source, one energy source that runs through everybody and running the show. Are you with me? Is this, is this me making sense? Can you see that? Yeah, could everybody, can you just see that there is something that operates through every human being? We we'll call it the life force or the soul, as well as other species. Something is keeping them alive. And that we can compare to the electricity. Electricity that operates, helps, is the power base of every electrical outlet, everything that is working based on electricity. So now this electricity, you know, you, you can use it in a mean way. You can put someone on an electrical chair and electrify them, execute them because you put them on the chair, or you can use that electricity in a hospital and you're using some machinery to save life. But it is the same electricity. You're using that electricity, opening up your computer, you're communicating with me, you are maybe day trading in stock market, you're checking things, you're buying things, selling things, you're operating with your computer, but it uses electricity to do it. And the same thing here, there is, the force, the life force that runs through each and every single being, everything is being run by that force. Yeah, can you see that? We agree, disagree, anyone here? Yeah, I just wanna make sure we're on the same page with each other. Okay, good, now, if or not even if the fact that everything is being run by 
one source, one life force is operating through each unit, every unit that you are observing, you're coming across in your life is being operated by this source, by this background energy. So this background energy runs through everybody. It's not, but, however, we, because of the manifestation, because we have come to this world, and this world is a world of separation, because you're seeing the opposites. You're experiencing continuously, you're in separation, you are experiencing others, other things, other events, other people, animals, vegetation. So it appears to be that there is a separation. It looks like it. It feels like it. It tastes like it. You know, you touch, touch it. It's like that. But it's being run by one source, one force running to them, running to all of them. So if you're willing to shift your consciousness, if you're willing to let go of the ideas you have, if you're willing to be open, Okay, let's say today you wake up and you say like, I'm really open. I really want to receive, I wanna get it. I don't wanna be looking at things from this limited point of view. I want to shift and you open yourself and you see this. And you see that this force is running through everyone, everything, everywhere. This life force is the very source that the waves in the ocean, the ocean's moving, and that's because of this source. Air, there's wind, and the wind is being moved by it. You see, storms, hurricanes, everything is being run by this force, by this consciousness. Then you start to see it's a dance. It's a dance that the source, consciousness, God, is playing this dance by itself, for itself. So as your awareness starts to expand and you're becoming more open and you start to realize that there is this happening is you simultaneously or slowly you begin to realize that, okay, there is something, God, consciousness, the source, I'm using the different words, so let's not worry about the words that I'm using, is operating and is running me, is, is operating me. And of course, each and every human being, or at least I would say, except a couple of saints that they were born, sages that didn't, weren't born with an ego, but the rest of them came with an ego. They have this sense of separation. So you are naturally, based on your programming and the way you've been designed, is you're referring back to yourself 
as if you are doing something. It seems like that. And you are choosing something. You're deciding on doing something. Now your consciousness is starting to expand and you're starting to awaken to ideas and also realizing that something much bigger than you is operating things. So slowly, slowly you're willing to let go of this notion that you're the one who's doing things. You're the one who creates your own life. You're the one who author your life. Because up to now, everything was indicating that you're behind the wheel. You're the one who calls the shot. shots. You're powerful. You, you're making your own choices. You're deciding where to go, what to do, what to eat, who to be with, blah, blah, blah. It looks like that. But now that you're starting to understand that there is a force, there is an entity, there is a living being, there's an intelligence or God behind everything. And maybe you had a couple near-death experiences or maybe a few times you got very close to the end or you had people who you loved, you lost them or things like that happen that there was nothing you can do about it and you kind of had to let go or force to do that, then you start trusting and recognizing that there is something much bigger and that thing is taking care of everything else. And in that, you start to kind of let go, allowing. Kind of like when things are not happening and the energy is not there, trying to make something happen, trying to make it happen, the energy is not there. And you're kind of like, you realize, okay, this is a time for me to just let go and kind of back off. You know, you pull back. And as soon as you pull back and you know you're you know like this trying to make it happen make it happen now you're just kind of pulling back and you're kicking back so what happens is immediately between you and something that you're really trying to make happen as you're just kind of letting go space opens up something opens up in between the two of you space opens up and then as space opens up then all of a sudden a lot of things become possible all of a sudden in this letting go in this allowing and trying to keep pushing 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 and that allowing space expansion opens up because you're coming you're coming out of this contraction you know, this has to happen. It must happen. I got to do this. I have, to, I have to be in control of this. I need to be in control of my kids. I need to be in control of my partner. I need to be in control of everything. I need to know everything. I need to know what's going on in the world. I need to know, you know, that kind of a mentality that a lot of people have, that they need to know everything. You have to lock everything. All the doors need to be locked. All the windows need to be locked. When they're leaving home, they have to put all the curtains shut because they're worried that someone's going to break into their place. If they're going to go on a vacation, they need to know everything. Where am I going to stay? Where are we going to do? Where are we going to eat? They need to plan everything. Or they freak out. We call them control freak. Does it sound familiar to anybody what I'm saying? Yeah. So then in allowing, 
means you don't have to necessarily know things. You don't have to know everything all the time. You're just operating from not knowing. Operating from a different place and allowing life to present itself, allowing life to give you some options. And I speak from direct personal experience that every once in a while I hit a wall. I get come to a place that it's not happening, whatever that is, whether it's my work, my teachings, maybe it's my relationship with someone or with my family. Maybe I relocated to another place. Maybe I started a new venture, whatever the story is. And you hit the wall and it's not happening. Or it's not going the way you were expecting it to go for whatever energy you put into it. And then you kind of like, if you recognize it, and if you're familiar with this, if you're expanding yourself, you also realize that there are times that you just kind of have to let go, kick back, just relax, just let's see what happens. And yeah, in some ways it is scary. In some ways it's confusing. I understand that. And in some ways, you may enter into a gap, a period of time from your operation of what you're doing. And then all of a sudden you hit the wall and nothing is happening or nothing, you know, it's foggy. You don't know, you don't have the energy. You wake up in the morning, you don't feel like doing it. You feel depressed. You feel like, eh. But even that, I would say you allow yourself to go through that period. Allow yourself, energy is not there, you're not feeling motivated, and it looks like you're going to go through depression. And sometimes you have to go through it instead of forcing yourself to feel really good and to be high energy sometimes you're just gonna have to allow yourself to feel shitty feel like eh with the awareness that this too will pass with the understanding that this is also a period is a difference because most people identify with their depression, with lack of energy, with they hit a slump in their life and nothing is happening. And they're like, eh, going through that. And they really identify with it. Or you recognize it that the life force, that which was running you before and you were all gone home with a lot of energy and that same thing was making things happen for you, everything was coming to you, that same energy is not happening right now. Recognizing it, that, okay, I'm just like unmotivated. And relaxing into that part, allowing to be unmotivated. You allowing yourself. Because you're allowed, you know, you're allowed to not know. You're allowed to also be down. You're allowed to feel depressed. You're allowed to be confused at 
parts in your life. That's part of the deal. You're not supposed to always know everything, to be high energy and go or to feel great or look good or be in shape or no. You're allowed to not know and be sluggish or or be unmotivated as well as you're allowed to be full of energy and motivated and clear and go for it. All of it is allowed. Okay, but so what, what happens when you need a solution? Like what happens when, you know, so relax and allow, and I get that, but what happens when, you know, the bill has to be paid or you need a new place to live or because what I'm finding right now is that um, a lot of the, a lot of the space where miracles take place has kind of been challenged, I'll say, by what's happening with, you know, the fear that's being, the illusion that's being portrayed, you know, that seeing who's following these lies and who's, who's following the myth and who's not. And it's really, it's really, maybe God's doing it, but it's like enhanced the separation, not, not enhanced it, but it's, you know, maybe you could accept a miracle from somebody who didn't think exactly like you, or maybe wasn't spiritually as tuned in or not, but you could still meet on some common ground. Whereas I feel like this whole virus thing has almost been designed to make people afraid of each other. So now when you're in that space where you really, you have the kind of faith for a miracle, but you need one, you know, it's like, do you just meditate deeper? You just tune deeper into that electricity because it is in all of us and something, is this just more of a test from that source or what? Because it just seems like people aren't as, I don't know, it's shifted their attitude. You know what I mean? Not people like us in this group, but I think we're the minority and, and that's okay. But I mean, do you, can you speak about what I'm talking about? Yes, absolutely. I, I, I understand 100% what you're saying. So consciousness is the only thing there is. God is the only thing there is. Everything, every single thing in the manifest world is that. There's nothing outside of God. There's never been anything outside of God, and there would never be anything outside of God. It's all that, including the pandemic, including the virus, including the whole shebang, the whole thing which appears to be uh, designed, all of it is a part of God's will. Because nothing can operate or happen unless the source wills it. Because there's nothing separated from that. Nothing is outside of it. So, human mind, so first we want to bring ourselves back always to that place of recognizing it and seeing it, that it's the will of the Allah. It's the will of the source that this is happening. There is no other thing independent on its own that could make this happen. So recognizing that, it brings tremendous relief. However, we keep forgetting and then we get reminded again. We just have to come back to this place, constantly coming back to this place. Then in the apparent world, the world that appears to be, and it looks like it's in separation, what it appears to be is gonna do its thing. It's going to do its dance. So right now, there's the appearance 
that people are afraid of each other. This is what the dance is right now. This is what's happening right now. What's going on? Whether it's designed by the big boys did it, or it happened, which you know I don't think it just happened on its own. It was designed, but still it happened in the apparent world, the world that appears to be real. It looks like there's others and these groups, other people that are separated from me, they created this thing to manipulate. But there is no separation between me and them. There are aspects of my own self. So I see that. I see that there is no, but yet still as an entity, a human being entity that operates in this world that has needs. Like I need a place to go to that it's quiet, to sleep. I need a vehicle to drive. I need gasoline from it, for it. I need food, I need clothing. I need my cell phone. I need to make money to pay for these things. All of these things, are in the apparent world, the world that we appear to be in it, are necessities and you have to take care of it and deal with it. However, you always come back into the place, to the source, that that which has created me is also responsible to carry me. Something has created me and created the world because I definitely didn't create myself and I didn't create this world. I don't have any recollect recollection on it. And obviously I don't have any power over it either. I can't do anything, I can't manipulate it because if I had any power over it, I would have manipulated and would be getting everything I wanted to get. But in so many ways, I seem powerless. So something much bigger than me has created this. And whatever that is, operates my body. My digestive system is working without any interfer interference from me. My cardiovascular system is working. My nervous system works. Something is running this machine, which I have no control over and I have no say. It's, a, it's an intelligence is running it. There is also an intelligence that running everything else, like every day turns to night, every night turns to day. I mean, it's like clockwork. It's always like that. It's never like the day never, never ends. It's never been like that. And it's something is making this planet turn around itself. This huge planet is being run, turning around itself. What does that? And it's, as it's turning around itself, it's turning around the sun. Something is doing it. Something is much beyond my understanding, is running the show. And in recognizing that, you, I surrender to it. I trust it. And at times things start to look scary, but you're trusting it. That I am really not my own responsibility. Papaji used to always say that, my Satguru in Lucknow, he always used to say that. And of course, it took me years to recognize, realize that there is something bigger than me that is really feeding me is taking care of me 
is when I'm driving, sometimes I'm not paying attention. I'm on my phone doing other things. And it's protecting me not to collide into another car. So we recognize that and we trust in, in it. And the whole pandemic thing, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, maybe 10, 20, I don't know. Later, you look back and maybe you understand why it happened. Maybe, for example, I never, someone, uh, let, let's say, um, you know, through history, later on, you look back and maybe you get some answers. At this point, why does the source want this to happen? It's happening for whatever reason. But in this dance that is happening, it's also forcing a lot of people to wake up. It's forcing a lot of people to question things. So a part of it is an awakening. And a lot of people wake up through that and they're forced to meditate, forced to go deep within themselves. In comparison that when everything is just like easy and the money's coming and everything is fine and you're traveling and you're going to parties and events and gatherings and festivals and da 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 it has the appearance that it looks like it kind of puts up puts us to sleep and things need to be shaken and sometimes life needs to get tough or you're pushed out of your norm for, for us to wake up, to dig deeper. What so what you're saying, what you're ahead. saying is to hold, hold space for everybody else that's waking up. Cause I guess what I'm looking for is so like step-by-step -step instructions, when something is looming, you take the mind, which wants to be panicking and you literally turn the volume down and you say, okay, ego, no dictating. I don't want your opinion. I'm turning the volume down. You're going to be quiet. And then you go inside and you surrender to that electricity that is all of it. And that even under these circumstances, there is a solution and I'm going to trust no matter what it is that's coming up that I'm afraid of or that I don't have the answer to the solution, I'm going to let go. I'm just going to totally let go. And that some type of, I'm going to trust that this force, it has my phone number, it has my email, it knows where I walk, it knows where I am. If it wants to connect me, it will. Because I guess I hear what you're saying for the greater collective. I'm finding that without judgment, the conversations that I'm overhearing are hurting my ears. And so like when I sit with the plants on the hill to meditate, I am finding better connection with those little pieces of flower and plants. That consciousness is easier for me to connect with than another human being for the most part, except for maybe like you guys, but you're not in person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Absolutely. So how do you find that job and that those friends and those roommates and those miracles? So just surrender no matter what, no matter what is in front of you, just that's the ticket, right? Just turn down the mind and then you surrender to the divinity. If you can, if, if you can surrender, yes. If you can. If it's in your dharma, if it's in your path of coming to this point of recognizing, surrendering, then it will happen. And if it's meant for you to struggle for another 10 years, that's what will be. Because when you go deeper, there is no you. It's just a thought.
there's a thought that there is a me, and this me can decide what to do. But it's been quite a while that I, it's the recognition has come that there is no me, there is no Zaratustra, there's no person separated who can decide on its own what to do. It's like something much greater is running through this dude to this guy. And it does whatever it wants to do. And sometimes it does crazy stuff. But yes, basically surrendering to what is. Because what can you do about it? I mean, you can go on Facebook, on social media, and write all these things about the pandemic, the conspiracy. It's all fake. It's bullshit. They're going to be injecting you with all this shit, da 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 Which, but where is it going to go? You're just activating your mind all the time. You're just in anxiety. You're in anger. You're in fear. And your reality becomes conflict versus if you're surrendering and you're pulling back space opens up and even in the middle of all these craziness let's say they're just bombing there's mines there's fires there's gangs there's all kinds of stuff and when you're pulling back and you're relaxing a little bit into what is then all of a sudden you see this pathway appears, which was invisible before, but now all of a sudden it makes itself visible that you can go through these things, through this pathway. While these things are happening, you find your way through it. And it doesn't touch you. But it does require... But do you think God's doing it to see? Uh, you got caught off. I didn't hear it. Well, because I'm not... Oh, do you think God's doing this to see? Like, who's ready for a greater solution? Because I'm not talking about Facebook. I mean, who gives their attention to griping on Facebook? I don't... I can't even relate to that at all. But I guess what I'm saying is, is it pushing us to a deeper solution? Like, seeing the pollution for a minute stopped on the planet and tuning into the earth, having this opportunity, not just what do I do, poor little me, my bill needs to be paid, but the whole, perhaps do we stop eating? Perhaps do we become a breatharian race? Perhaps do we take that consciousness really to the next level? Because I guess when I'm tuning in, that's what, what is happening for me. And then I'm not really knowing where, where, where else that's happening to find, like it's so exciting to get that solution from God. And then, and then now how do you put it into action? You know, cause I find that some of this is, it's God's play because how else will it push, like you said, to wake up, but to wake up to what? Not just knowing that we're God, but to then finding the solution to live in coherence if we want to continue being on this planet, right? Like how much have we destroyed things in the last hundred years that this planet, we need to nurture her. So isn't this the space where when you tune into that electricity, those brilliant solutions can come out of, and then we got to plug in together to co-create them, right? Um, that planet that has been dis destroyed in past hundred years, it's been created by God. It's been destroyed by God and it will be rebuilt by God. The same people who destroyed it, they were, God was operating through them to destroy it. It's the same source. It's like God is playing both sides, the good guy and the bad guy. And, okay, so, so and, then just find your place in it all to find joy? Because it's that's what you're saying then. So you're saying don't take it so personally and just like whatever. It's absolutely impersonal. Whatever is happening on this planet, it, it is impersonal. And it's a part of the phenomena. It's a part of the duality. 
And whatever force, dark force you encounter on this planet, the opposite of it exists simultaneously. Because this is the dimension of dualities. Everything is balanced. None exists, none of it exists without the other side. They both exist simultaneously. And it's the same source, it's the same potential, infinite intelligence potential that wants to experience both sides simultaneously. It wants to experience life through you, from your point of view, and the challenges you're going through right now with maybe where you're living or maybe with income, with or your concern about environment or what's going to happen in the future, whatever is happening through you is exactly what God wants to experience through you. All your experiences are God's experiences. Every thought comes through your mind, anything you feel, it's what it wants to be experienced. And similarly to other people, the ones that you feel like they're in robots. Uh, it's Rachel, right? Yeah, sorry, yeah, I didn't Rachel, yeah. yeah. No, this is yeah. super helpful, so, by the way. Like, I really appreciate this, yeah. Yeah, so Rachel is in La Jolla, and then you see a lot of robots there and a lot of like square people and frightened, and you go to get your coffee and they're still taking space from you or they don't want to look at you or talk to you. So, so right now, what's going on is a period of contraction is happening. And the energy is always contracts and expands. That's the way it moves, the way it gets expressed. So right now, we're experiencing this period of contraction. And if you lived in 1938, 36, 37, 38, 39 in Europe, then you would be at the, the time that the World War II started. And it was very frightening, very dark. They were shipping people to concentration camps, burning them, cooking them, torturing them. It was a very, very dark period of time. So this Thank one is... Go ahead. And God is also behind the helm of that, is what All you're saying. It. Is you're saying, wow. All of it. All of it is God. All of it. The guy who's torturing and the guy who's getting tortured, they're both different expressions of the same one. Because none of them can exist without the other. A, none of them can exist or does exist outside of the source. Everything is consciousness. So none of these guys can exist outside of consciousness. So they're all being run by the same power source, same electricity is running through both of them. None of them has an independent chip or entity that they're operating on their own. They cannot operate on our own because they don't exist. God is the only one operates them. So if you can go deeper in this teachings, this revelation, this way, and start looking at things from this angle, this is the expansion of consciousness. You start looking at it from that place, then you start seeing things. Things begin to reveal themselves to you. You will enter into another dimension. You enter into a new and more expanded consciousness and peace will come. And one way of it is to simply recognizing the watcher within yourself, recognizing the observer within yourself. 
Are you there? Rachel? Yes, I'm listening. Okay. All right. So let me elaborate on that one. What do I mean that? Like the mind, you said the mind want, the mind wants to go crazy, especially if you're not trained. What's happening in the world? What's going to happen? I can't believe it. Look what they're doing. The world is going to be destroyed. Blah, 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 blah. So A, you want to disconnect from being responsible for the world. Don't worry about the world. The world's been taking care of itself ever since the ever since. The planet Earth has been around way longer than you and I can even imagine. We can't even imagine how long it's been around. Obviously, this planet that supports life and has got all these species, because we're not the only ones, has managed to feed them because we're being fed by the planet. If the planet doesn't want to feed us, we're all going to die. And if the planet finds us that we're cancerous and we're dangerous, all it needs to do is shake itself for 10 or 15 minutes. And human life will end. And it has the ability to do it. But obviously, it's keeping us around. So we can't really damage the planet. It's way more intelligent. It's been around billions of years. And you and I have been around 40, 50, 60, 70 years. So we just don't have the intelligence to match it. It's beyond us. And it's feeding you and I. And it can completely stop doing it if it wants. So that's one thing. But now we just go a little bit deeper. Is that which has created this universe, created this world, doesn't know what's going on? lost its control through the Illuminati or a group of wealthy people who want to vaccinate everyone or do population control or whatever. Now that which created everything doesn't know what to do anymore? No, I, it's beyond that. But maybe it's doing it through those of us that are wanting and being called to that greater intelligence to instigate change, to take care of a planet, to wanna provide solutions yeah. that work to clean up. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying is, is I'm inspired to clean up, not to just be the super plus enjoyment of drinks and goods and painting. I, you know, had this huge career as an artist. I, don't, I think it's, I'm being called to tend to her, to tend to the earth that we are that intelligence, that we can tap into that intelligence greater than the families with the money that created the virus, greater than the government, greater. So we're here, we've been embodied, we've awakened, we know the problem and we wanna help. And so then that power that is the energy of everything too, just keep meditating on, okay, you're showing me this, how, where, where do my efforts go? And I guess that's yeah. what I'm asking because I have the energy and I just don't know where to plug it in. And then it's like, well, what right. do I go do? Work at a restaurant that I don't believe in anymore? You know what I mean? To yeah. Make money? Right. You know? Well, the obviously the same source that is doing the distraction, the same source is motivating you and <laughs> people like you to clean up. As I mentioned, both both. It's, it's, it's in the phenomena, it's in the duality. So both sides exist. Both forces are here. One is destroying, the other one is rebuilding it. And far out, if you're really inspired to do it, that's fantastic. There's, no, there's no, nothing wrong with it, it's wonderful. And I'm sure 
more people who are in this mode will join you or you'll find groups who are like-minded. However, well, let, me, let me just add one thing that I wanted to say earlier and I forgot to say it, is when the mind goes crazy, my recommendation is as a tool to help you is come back to the watcher sink into this part of yourself that watches and observe observe your thoughts look at your thoughts you mentioned that you know should i turn on the volume or not so you have the ability to look at your thoughts uh, are we on the same page yeah, I have the ability to not think, just to turn it off as well. Oh, that's far out. So you're, you're very advanced. That's really great. So, okay. So when you turn it off and there's no thoughts, can you go there right now? Can you come to this no thoughts place? Yes. Okay. All right. So when you're not thinking and you're in deep silence, is there a problem? No, ever. Okay. Or can you stay there a little bit? Well, yeah, it's like samadhi when I stay there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then where does the problem go? Where is the problem? What happened to the problems we were talking about? The attention is taken off them. The attention is taken off of them, exactly. So they kind of disappear, don't they? Yeah. Right, they're not there. And then so when I'm you- So I'm good at that part, yeah, I'm good at that part. It's then just the impeding, okay, then to get food to put in the vessel so it keeps going. And like you right. said, the gas the car, it's those things, right? Well- And to not- this yeah. Here, what I recommend. Why? Why don't we do this for this week? Okay. If you can, for this week, take your attention off of all these stuff that we were talking about, the things that they they're you're they're concerning you. If you take your attention off of it, if you can just be in this place of quietness inside, turning. And if any thoughts arise that, oh my God, what's going to happen? What am I going to do? And you just kind of observe it. The thought comes, what am I going to do with money? Where am I going to pay my bills? Da, 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 da. Because it is a very valid concern. I, I have that concern too. Okay, I don't want to talk to you from this place like, oh, I don't have any worries about finances. It's always an issue when you're operating something, especially like this, that needs to be fed constantly. Finances is always an issue. And yeah, you have these periods that everything is good. And then you hit these periods that there's nothing's coming in. And you think like, okay, the whole thing is gonna collapse. I'm talking about personal experience and being very honest with you here and in, in broadcasting it. Continuously dealing with financial issues of how we're going to continue this endeavor. And there are times like, okay, we're gonna have to close shop because there are two straight, you're gonna have to go do something else because this is not happening. And then it's for me, it's always like I have to pull back and just say, okay, all right, so what else can I do? What can I do to make a living? Or just kind of relax into not knowing, pulling back, just, all right, do, do whatever you want to do with me. You've been doing whatever you wanted to do. So take me wherever I'm going to go. Well, what do you want me to do now? Open up a coffee shop. Go do some trading. 
bitcoins. Uh, what do you want me to do? All right, this is not happening. All right, let's see. And then in that surrender, that pulling back is like, ah, oh, there's always like something happens. Something reveals itself. Some door opens up. Somebody shows up and make a donation or something inspires me or some door opens up and the teaching continues. The show continues. It doesn't collapse. I don't know. It's pure magic. I don't know how it just keeps going. I have no idea. But something that I recognize, realize, much, much bigger than my will is running this show. That thing knows what it's doing, and I trust in that. Awesome. Yeah. So my suggestion is this week, if you can, you know, if you are not to engage with life or, you know, you have the ability, uh, possibility, is just kind of like pull back and kind of observe the thoughts, the emotions. They're going to come, and sometimes they're overwhelming, but just simply be aware of them. Look at them. And then as strong as they appear, they just disappear. They, they come and they go. The thoughts come, the desires come. Oh my God, what's going to happen? And then if you're just... You're just being meditative. You're just looking. And then they disappear and they go and then peace comes. And it becomes quiet again. Then maybe the next day there is a moment you watch something. You checked out something on Facebook. Ooh, something really strong comes and really makes you contracted. Again, just kind of observe it and then it just disappears. So it's really okay to just check out and go to that space of thoughtlessness as often as I want, really. Absolutely. I mean, okay. Absolutely. Because, you know, rather than I understand, I, I totally understand what you're saying because so many people on this path, they're like feel responsible that they need to be engaged with world events. And, and if, and they feel guilty if they're not engaged. But my suggestion is completely the opposite. The less engaged you are, the more peaceful your life becomes and the more it's flowing. The less I don't watch the news, I don't read stuff so much, I don't watch the conspiracy videos. Every once in a while, I just wanna know what's going on. I may just go check something out. But the moment I go into it, I can just see like anxiety starts to happen or I get contracted or my mind starts to get activated. Oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And <clears throat> for me, it's like nothing. Nothing's going to happen. I mean, not, oh, that, yeah. not that nothing's going to happen in the world. It's like nothing's going to happen to me. What can happen to me? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can relate to that. I don't, I don't want, I haven't watched a single ever news line of this COVID. I haven't get, I don't get on Facebook. I'm not, I think that's my issue is that I'm so disconnected because I don't believe in giving it my attention that I feel like I'm still walking in this world of magic and miracles, but I can feel the different vibrations of the majority of the rest of the population. And yes. that's where it's two different planes of existence. And I just want to, I moved from Colorado here to make new friends, but I feel like everybody's programmed to believe this thing that isn't true. You know, and that's why I'm so thankful just to speak to you guys because <clears throat> you seem to know a little bit more of God and the truth and that's all, you know? Right, I get it. <clears throat> I understand. 
So my suggestion is you turn the poison into medicine. And if you use this opportunity for let's say a week, 10 days, and, and just be quiet, just be in the space and bring yourself back into the juice. And when you're quiet, you're still, expansion starts to happen and the presence starts to reveal itself. Her majesty, the supreme being, it starts to reveal itself. You start feeling the presence of God. And you start feeling the bliss. The bliss comes. The joy comes. And don't feel guilty. Awesome. Because, because this, this, your, it, it is the oneness, but each and every one of us are on our individual path. So, You've come to this point, and obviously the source is leading you to awakening, leading you to self-realization. So you kind of have to make a decision, like which one is your priority? Is your priority to come to full realization and recognize, find inner peace within yourself? Or is to deal with the world and world issues or whatever it is. Where, what's your objective? Inner you peace, know, hands down. <laughs> no contest. Okay. Then use, use the opportunity to discover inner peace. Imagine yourself being in, in a monastery or in a workshop a situation that's really weird, like what is going on right now. And this situation, you're using it to dive within. So the other world, the other world is not entertaining. It's, it's boring, it's fearful, it's representing separation. So it's not really juicy to connect with it. Then use that as an excuse to dive in inside, to find the inner juice. Because when it's really yummy out there and it's fun and everything and you're connecting, so we're not focusing very much on the inner because it's outside. So I'm recommending like this week, just shift things. Let's see what happens next week when we meet again. Let's see if you feel something different or some discovery has taken place or not. Let's give it a try. We have nothing to lose. Perfect. And what you're saying is this is doing exactly what it's meant to do. If I'm shifting inward and finding places in nature to meditate and that's become my priority, then maybe this is all perfect. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for bringing it up. So we're going to do another meditation. And this other meditation is... Let's just, and you don't have to agree with me or anything, but let's just, as if we're playing a game, okay? Make believe. Anybody played make believe when you were kids? Like, I don't know, you, when you were kids and you're creating games, you're playing, whether you're playing with another group or with the other kids or whatever, you know, is the, our imaginations were making believe or whatever story, scenario we like. So why don't we just do this? I just want to show you something. And let's say 
in this game we're playing, there is no you. And whatever you think, whatever you do, anything good you've done, anything bad you've done, anything constructive or destructive, all of your good habits with all of your addictions, maybe your dark addictions, okay? All of your sexual fantasies, all of your dark stuff, all of your good stuff in this game is God is living it. God is doing it. God is making you do these things. God is making you do the dark stuff. Because God or God is making you do kindness, helping other people, making donation, serving others. So in this meditation, in the next five minutes, we're just going to go to this place that God is living through you and experiencing life as you, okay? Any questions? No? Okay. So let's do that. Let's just dive into this. And, you know, you take a deep breath, you relax into it. And you're observing... And you are coming to this place that whatever you've done was God's doing. Whatever has happened to you, other people have done to you, good things, bad things, that was God's doing. God is right now experiencing life in this unit. You are a unit. You're like a computer programmed machine that you're programmed. And whatever, whatever you are is the result of your programming. So you have no say, absolutely, you're not in control of anything. And whatever you're going to be doing, again, is God's doing. In a way, let's say you're a robot, you have absolutely no say.
How does it feel to just being this place? Something's running you. feels refreshing yeah yeah it's just coming back into the center coming back into the source where it's quiet and it's away from the blah 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 and then you just come back to the core and and then what happens is you realize ah this is where the juice is. The juice is here. And it's coming out of me. It's surrounding me. It's always here. This, no one can ever take away from, from you. Because it's impossible. We can be hypnotized and forget and give in to the world of thoughts, world of emotions. But the true nature of ourselves cannot be taken away because you can never not be God. And now that you've come this close and you're touching it, you have the ability in diving in. And every time you do, you self-realize every time you're just quiet and you're in the juice you realize the truth of who you are and if you forget you come back on wednesday and you get remind re reminded again and this is very different from the pseudo spirituality because in pseudo spirituality you're continuously trying to become something it's constantly trying to solve childhood issues or traumas or overcome emotions there's a lot of doing in it do this, do that, rebirthing or going to the mother's womb, going to the womb or trying to use the power of mind. There's a lot of teachings out there using your mind to manifest things, to create things. There's a lot of doing, doing, a lot of mind activations. Activate your mind by doing therapy, going back into childhood issues or whatever. I need to solve this issue with my dad or my mom. And I've been doing it for 30 years. So you're constantly going back into your childhood, trying to recreate a traumatic issue. So you're using the mind. You're going in the memory, it's the mind. So activating the mind. So it's mindy. Or trying to use the power of the mind to manifest, to get what you want. So again, it's mindy. You're constantly trying to visualize. You're constantly trying to use the right words to manifest because they tell you if you don't use these positive words, then you're gonna manifest something you don't want. So you constantly have to think about using the right words. That's again, mind versus no mind, that you simply are and you're quiet and you're surrendering and you're allowing God 
to take over your life. So you're kind of fading into it, fading into what is, rather than trying to manipulate. And then you'll find out your life becomes very easy, very simple. Things start to click, they come together. And when they don't come together, there's no resistance because you're not trying to make something happen. You're surrendering to what is. So you're allowing the game to come to you. You're allowing it to come to you rather than trying to force it. And that takes a certain spiritual maturity. Not everybody's ready at that place. You somehow get prepared to get to that place. I love that because it's easier because God's vision, her majesty's vision is probably better than what I'm trying to manifest. So by just relaxing and surrendering into it, let that energy dazzle me, show me what it has planned for me. Absolutely. I love 100%. that. And then also you start seeing it from that point of view. So you see the negative or what's screwed up as Her Majesty's design plan. So as you shift your vision, then you start to realize there is no others. Others don't exist. They're all different aspects of your own self. And they're all designed to be there to do a certain function. So perfect. all of a sudden, everything becomes perfect. You, you start to see the perfection in this screwed up, appear, appearing to be screwed up world. You start to see it as perfect. It's exactly the way it needs to be. Nothing needs to be touched. The boss is running the show. So you keep seeing it and you keep telling yourself. And then so the more you see it and the more you say this to yourself, the more you relax into it and the more you become indifferent to what appears and what disappears. You're indifferent to it because you're finding the juice here. The juice is really here. And the juice has always been here. It's never anywhere else. I love it. I get it. I love it. Thank you. Beautiful. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So let's see where we're at. That's 11 minutes to 12 o'clock. Anyone, anybody likes, has a question, comments, anything? Hello, Candice. Hi, Candice. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Well, Candace, number one, I want to thank you for your lovely emails. <laughs> number two, I want to apologize to you for not being very attentive and not writing back to you. I have to admit that past few weeks, I have not had much juice um, in regards to this. And... Uh, I've been energetically distant from everything with the traveling, with the moving, with problems I had with computer and internet and everything is, but I can see like my energy is coming back. So I apologize to a lot of you if I'm not very responsive and I'm not on top of things. It's just the juice hasn't been there. And, uh, my heart's connected to you. I feel the love, I see it, but just like anyone, sometimes you're not into it or it's not <laughs> happening. And sometimes it's happening. 
So, but I really want to thank you for always writing to me and being very attentive. You're welcome. You've had a lot going on. I realize this, so it's all fine. But okay. I'm going to ask if you, are you willing to say anything about the vaccine and about us taking the vaccine or avoiding the vaccine? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if if you, those of you who've been with me all these years, you know I, I don't get into political uh, stuff. <laughs> I may throw a couple of, every once in a while I may mention something, but uh, it's something I don't really get into. Um, I can only, I, I can't tell anybody what to do. Because uh, you're all grown ups, and you got You have to do what you have to do, and you have to follow your heart and and see what your heart tells you to do. So, I personally, I'm not into getting vaccinated. So, as long as I can avoid it, I'm going to avoid it. That's that's all I have to say. I don't know what's in it. I don't know what the deal is. If I get to a point that I have to do it because I can't go to my bank or I can't get in a plane and travel or I can't have a driver license or Whatever. Uh, a lot of basic functions, I'm not allowed to do it because I'm not vaccinated, then I'll do it. Mm -hmm. But as is, um, I don't feel like doing it. Does it mean I'm not going to get COVID-19? Yeah, maybe I get it. Maybe I already had it. Um, does it mean like if I get it, I, I, maybe I die? Well, I'm going to die one day. I don't know when. So personally, I'm not into it. Yeah, That's I agree. Good. I'm not either. But so. I, would, I thank you for, for saying that. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? Anything else? Anything you want to share? Or you have a question? Or <laughs> there's a lot of ups and downs on this path many times you're going to doubt yourself there are times that you say you know what forget about this I'm not interested I'm just going to go in the world this is all bullshit blah 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 there's a lot of ups and downs and twists and turns in it. And you go through a lot of different phases when you're getting closer. Um, you basically have to roll with it. And depending, and just you know, to many people, you may appear to be very wise, but then you're going to have obstacles or challenges in your level of consciousness that uh, you have to deal with that. Doubt, the mind, the emotions, 
the world, relationships. You know, you may get to this point that you think you got it down and you figured everything out. And then all of a sudden your world goes upside, upside down. So you just have, you develop patience and allowing back to what we talked about, allowing, you have to allow yourself and not beat yourself up that if you're down, allow yourself that too. Because keep in mind that the observer, the one that is aware, doesn't have ups and downs. The watcher, the part of you that's aware that you're down, is completely still. <clears throat> is the same part that is aware that you're up. So ups and downs are being observed by the part of you which is always still. It's always in stillness. So recognizing that there is this part of you which is unshaken, it's never been born, it will never die, it's always still, it's always silent, it's always love, that part is really who you are. And these other parts, they all come and go. These other states, they're, they're temporary. They appear and they disappear. So you, by recognizing that, then you allow yourself, you allow your temperament, you allow your emotions, your thoughts to have a storm or have a burst or whatever is happening, you're allowing that to happen without beating yourself up. And then what happens? Whatever burst or there's a volcano erupted, I mean, there's a, um, yeah. And then everything's going to go back again. No matter how big of an explosion takes place, everything will go back, fall back into itself again. Calm always comes back to point zero. So that, with the understanding that God consciousness is the only thing there is. Nothing in this life can, has, no, has any power without the will of God. God has to will it. Otherwise, that thing can never exist or never happen. So you find God within yourself and you feel the presence of God here. Then you trust it. You keep trusting it that you're in good hands. You are taken care of. You're always in good hands. You're always taken care of. We just come back to this place. The mind wants to go all over, goes to all these places. You just bring yourself back here. Every time you catch yourself, bring yourself back here. Here. And you're quiet. You're present, and then presence appears. Love comes back. Peace comes back. The juice reveals itself again. You're here. And you feel the presence. So make that your, if you want to practice anything, make that your practice. Remind yourself. Catch yourself. And bring yourself back. And then very soon you start to see the quality of your life changes. I'm not saying that all of a sudden you're going to start making money or uh, your finances changes or some of your worldly challenges are not there anymore. But what I'm saying is the quality of your life changes because 
you change, you're operating from stillness, from calmness, from being silent. And that has a major effect in your interactions. It's nice to see you all. Very happy that you're all here and we're all together. Um, My pages are, uh, all my social media pages are Zarathustra 5D. My website is Zarathustra.tv. And my email is info at Zarathustra.tv. So if you want to write to me, go ahead. Um, I don't have any programs. I did mention that I'm going to offer the shamanic uh, healing session. I'm still figuring things out and uh, I'm going to offer it. So I'm not going to get out of it, just letting you know. Um, I'm around. Um, we're going to be together and we're going to do things together. So feel free to write to me if you have any suggestions. I'm open to it. Um, other than that, I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Namaste. Mm -hmm.